If you're starting with the ESP32, one of the first questions you'll run into is which development environment should you use? Arduino IDE, Platform IO, or Expressive's official ESP IDF? The challenge is every tutorial you find online uses a different tool. Some people say Arduino IDE is the easiest, others insist Platform IO is the future and advanced users swear by ESP IDF. If you're a beginner, it can be confusing, even frustrating to know where to begin. In this video, I'm going to cut through that noise and I'll show you how to set up your ESP32 environment inside VS Code using Platform IO, my recommended workflow. I'll also give you a quick comparison of Arduino IDE and ESP IDF. So by the end of the video, you'll know exactly which one fits your goals and your learning path. So whether you're just getting started into ESP32 or you're ready to move beyond scattered tutorials, this guide will get you set up with the tools you actually need to start building real IoT projects. Before we jump into the installation, let's talk about why choosing the right development environment actually matters. A lot of beginners underestimate this part, but your tools shape your entire learning experience. On one end, you've got the Arduino IDE. It's super simple, install it, add board support, and you can flash code within minutes. It's perfect for beginners, but once your project grows, you start to feel the limitations pretty quickly. On the other end, you've got the ESP IDF, Expressive's official framework. It gives you complete control over the hardware and professional grade features as well, but it's harder to learn and not very beginner friendly. That's where Platform IO in VS Code comes in, right in the middle. It gives you simplicity to get started quickly, but also scales with you as your projects become more complex. It comes with libraries, debugging, multiple board support, all integrated into the system. That balance is why I personally recommend it. And if you don't just want to set things up, but actually build your first device, I've created a free course called RGB Moodlight. Get started with ESP32. In just 90 minutes, you'll wire an RGB LED strip and a button and cycle color modes to build your first smart lamp. There's no prior experience needed and the link is in the description. Join the free course to get started along with me. All right, step one is installing Visual Studio Code or VS Code for short. This is the code editor we'll be using to manage and build our ESP32 projects. Head over to code.visualstudio.com. On the home page, you'll see download buttons for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Choose the one for your operating system and start the download. Once the installer is downloaded, you can go ahead and run it. For Windows, just click through the installer with the default settings. On Mac, drag it into your applications folder. On Linux, Follow the package instructions shown on the site. After installation, open VS Code, you should see the welcome screen. This confirms that everything has been installed correctly. From here, we're ready to add Platform IO. Now that VS Code is installed, the next step is adding Platform IO. Platform IO is the extension that turns VS Code into a powerful development environment for microcontrollers like the ESP32. Inside VS Code, look over at the left-hand sidebar and click on the extensions icon. In the search box, type Platform IO IDE. It should be the first result with the little alien icon. Click Install and give it a minute to download and set up. Once the installation is complete, restart VS Code to finish the setup. When VS Code reopens, you'll see a new Platform IO icon on the left-hand toolbar. Clicking this takes you to the Platform IO home screen where you can create projects, manage libraries, and configure your boards. 
If you see the screen, congratulations, Platform IO is installed and ready to use. Now let's confirm the Platform IO actually supports the ESP32. Inside VS Code, click the Platform IO icon on the left, then open Platform IO Home. From here, click on New Project. Give your project a name and under board search for ESP32. You'll see a huge list of supported boards. For this demo, I'll choose the ESP32 dev module, which works for most common ESP32 development boards. Once you create the project, Platform IO will generate a folder with some default files. The key file to notice is called platformio.ini. This is where the board and framework are defined. Now let's plug in the ESP32 board. Use a USB cable and connect it to your computer. Back in VS Code, Platform IO should automatically detect the COM port or USB device. If you see your board listed here, then congratulations, Platform IO is set up and your ESP32 is ready for development. But if your board doesn't show up, especially on a Mac, don't worry, most ESP32 boards use a USB to serial chip, usually CP2102 or CH340. You'll need to install a driver so your Mac can recognize it. Go to the manufacturer's website and download the macOS driver for your chip, CP210X or CH34X. After installing the driver and restarting your Mac, plug in your board again. This time you should see it appear in VS Code. Once you can see it, you're good to go. So how does Platform I.O. compare to other popular options? Let's start with the Arduino IDE. This is usually the very first step for beginners. It's lightweight, easy to install, and with just a few clicks, you can add ESP32 board support. Within minutes, you can upload a basic sketch like Blink to your ESP32. The downside, well, once your project gets bigger, the Arduino IDE feels limited. Managing libraries, debugging, and scaling projects becomes quite messy. On the other end, we have the ESP IDF, which is Expressive's official development framework. This is what professional engineers use for production level ESP32 projects. It gives you full hardware control, access to advanced features, and direct integration with Expressive's SDK. But it comes with a steep learning curve and you'll spend more time setting up and understanding the build systems before you even get to the fun part of coding. This is why Platform IO in VS Code is so powerful. It sits right in the middle. You get the simplicity and speed of Arduino style programming, but with advanced features like library management, debugging tools, and support for multiple boards and frameworks all in one place. It's the best balance for ambitious makers who want to build projects that grow with them. If you're serious about mastering electronics through real IoT projects, hit like and subscribe. This channel is built for ambitious makers and aspiring engineers just like you. And every video moves you closer to building professional level skills. So here's the big picture. Arduino IDE is great for beginners. It gets you started fast, but has limits as your project grows. ESP IDF is powerful and professional, but harder to set up and master. Phantom IO in VS Code gives you the best of both worlds. It's simple enough to get you started, but powerful enough to grow along with you. With this setup, your ESP32 is ready for development. You can build anything from simple IoT projects like blinking LEDs and basic sensors all the way up to smart lighting systems, automation hubs, and connected dashboards. And now your development environment is set and you're ready to actually start building. That's why I created the free course RGB Mood Light Get Started with ESP32. In part one, you'll set up the board, wire an RGB LED strip, and have a working IoT lamp within 90 minutes. 
In part two, you'll dive deeper, implementing coding best practices, state machines, and amazing lighting effects like rainbow, breathing, and fire, and many more. Click the link in the description to join the free course and start building your IoT portfolio. I'll see you inside the course. That's it for now. I'm VJ, your designated guide to helping you think and build like an engineer.